The Samsung Note 9 is a very, very good audio playback device for IEMs specifically and IEMs that don't require a lot of power. So if you've got anything similar in terms of power requirement that I have here, FIO FH3, the FIO JD7s and Sennheiser IE600s, the Samsung Note 9 will power all of these quite well. It powers the FH3s the best because these require the least power out of the three on the table. The JD7s are second in terms of the lowest and then the IE600 Sennheisers do require the most power. But the Note 9 will power the Sennheisers well also. So it's it's very good with IEMs and the sound quality is excellent. It is on a par with any digital audio player that I own and the highest end digital audio player I own is at the moment the Hibi R6 Pro 2, this thing here. And this was around 600 pounds. The Hibi does not sound better than the Note 9. And in terms of certain requirements, so power, the Hibi obviously is specified toward audio as a specific audio playing device, a digital audio player. So it will have high gain options and all of that and will be better for powering earphones and headphones that have higher needs in terms of juice or power requirements. So just focusing on IEMs and low power requirements, this will match all of my digital audio players and most specifically in terms of sound. So in the blind AB, I wouldn't be able to tell which is the Samsung Note 9 and which is the Hibi R6 Pro 2 or Hibi R5 Gen 2, which I also have and the Hibi R3 2, which I also have. The only difference really, or the biggest difference is in terms of the amount of power and volume that can be provided. So this is very, very good. In terms of screen, the Hibi R6 Pro 2 has one of the best screens on any digital audio player. It's 1080p, it's not 4K or anything, I'm pretty sure. But this screen is probably better. Well, in terms of resolution, it is definitely better. This goes, this has a 4K screen. Uh, the Hibi doesn't. This will also better the Hibi for battery life. If you are just playing local files on this, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, not leaving the screen on, this will last you easily over 30 hours. I'm intrigued to know how long it would last actually. I might time it one time and see how long it takes to actually kill the battery on it. But the Hibi R6 Pro 2 lasts a paltry six hours. So this has terrible battery life, but it's only for home use. So battery life wasn't a massive uh, important factor or requirement for me for the Hibi R6 Pro 2. The mobile, in terms of digital audio player devices that I want to take out with me, the mobile ones, I do require a bit more battery life out of those. So I like at least 15, 20 plus hours for the portable ones that I take out with me. So the Hibi R3 2, that will give you about 15 hours. So this is better than the Hibi R3 Pro 2. And the Sony A55, that will give about 30, 35 plus hours. This will probably better that as well. So in terms of if you want something that will sound very good for low power stuff, I'm referring specifically to IEMs, not over ears. And you want a great screen with a good response and um, yeah, just, just high quality and you want something that has good software, is responsive, fluid, quick, and 
basically a pleasure to use. This is a better option than pretty much all of the digital audio players that I have. And as well as the 3.5 headphone jack, this does have expandable storage, SD card. So when I purchased this at the time, it was the highest storage option that I got. It's 512 gigabytes internal storage that this thing has. Most of them came with 128. So if you are looking for something to play your digital music on and you want something that is cheap, that is good quality, you want a good screen, you want good responsiveness in terms of interacting with the UI and the software and stuff like that, and you want decent battery life, something like this is a good contender. Now, this is obviously old now, 2017, so it's not sold new, but you can probably still find them online secondhand and they will be pretty cheap. Uh, one two eight gigabyte model you'll probably find but as I said the SD expandable storage is an option so if you have a huge local library you want to put it on your phone or your digital audio player substitute you can do that with the SD card expandable storage so this is very good sound quality tick battery life tick fluidity uh, speed software interface ui experience tick it's all good really so in terms of newer stuff really for phones there's very few phones these days that have a 3.5 headphone jack unfortunately it's pretty rare these days i know the sony xperia phones still have them but also if you look lower down the samsung phones at the cheaper end there is still one i can't remember the model name it might be a something i'll put a screenshot of it but there's still one or two samsung's that are available with one uh 3.5 headphone jack and two expandable sd card storage so this phone will have it and i may in 2024 purchase it just to test it out, see how good it sounds, see if it sounds as good as something like the Note 9. Now, obviously the Note 9 was the flagship of its day. So I think it was around a thousand pounds or 900 odd pounds at the time. So it will obviously have different components to the newest Samsung that I'm referring to. But the newest Samsung is six years newer than this so will the flagship audio components of 2017 used in the samsung note 9 complete compete even with lower priced components used in the new samsung and how will that translate to sound i don't know but i'm curious and the phone i'm curious enough and the phone is cheap enough for me to probably buy it in the new year. So if and when I do buy it and test it out, I'll let you guys know how it sounds. But yeah, a very, very good audio playing device, the Samsung Note 9. And even now or at the time, I never saw it get any kudos for its audio capability in terms of playing decent quality audio via the wired headphone connection and it sounds really good.